Good morning, folks. Hopefully everybody can hear me OK. Um, I think um, we've almost got everybody that we're expecting. We might have a few more filtering through. Um, so if you bear with me, I think we'll just hang on for just one minute and see if there's anybody else coming in. I think there's a couple of other people in the lobby to be let in. Right, good morning folks. I think I think we'll begin. We might have a few more people filtering in as we go. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to join us this morning. Um, just before we begin, sort of an immediate bit of housekeeping, and I think you were notified on, on invitations for this, but this session is is recorded. Um, so by, by joining and being here, we, we are assuming your consent for that. Um, my name's Claire Hurley. I'm uh, the Good Growth Strategy and Implementation Manager, and I'm very pleased to um, talk you through um, the Good Growth Programme today. Um, in terms of the, the session, um, sort of appreciate it's a bit strange. We're sort of all holding you um, uh, silent and cameraless in, in the background. Um, but uh, what we'd like to do is take this as an opportunity to sort of in, inform you. Um, and uh, we're also um, we'll be inviting sort of questions as we go, because I've got uh, uh, my merry band of colleagues also on the call that are going to try and uh, keep up with the, the questions in the chat as well. Um, you probably will have questions as we go um, or, or you may already be sat on questions. Um, hopefully some of that will be covered through the presentation, but please do feel free to make use of the chat. We'll try and answer um, where we um, aren't able to uh, get to it or perhaps don't have an answer for you. Um, we will be following up very shortly after this session um, with the uh, transcript and, um, and any answers to questions that, that we didn't get to. Um, so uh, without further ado, Beth, would you like to put the agenda on, please? Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, so um, that's right, Beth, you can move on one. Apologies all, that was slightly the wrong agenda. Um, so uh, uh, basically um, we've uh, allocated an hours session today and uh, it's really broken down sort of into, into three parts. Um, I'll apologise in advance that it's going to be sort of all me um, talking you through. Um, we are going to try and finish definitely on time, um, but maybe a little bit sooner. I'm sure we'd all welcome a little bit of time back in our back in our diaries. And uh, the main structure is um, sort of, first of all, I'll talk you through the Good Growth Programme sort of generally. Um, talk about the calls um, and getting into um, the applicant support that's available and then at the very end talking through some of the more technical stuff um, which I think some of you um, will be particularly interested in and uh, hopefully that will be very informative for you and uh, and give you sort of a, a good uh, a steer on where to go with your projects and, and accessing the um, good growth fund and shared, shared prosperity for your projects. Um, as I mentioned previously um, we're really happy to take uh, questions in in, in the chat. Um, we did a session like this yesterday um, and it did get very busy in the chat. I think it was well well managed and we managed to get to sort of most questions. Um, but please be assured the slides, um, the recording for, from this uh, presentation and also a follow up with all the questions um, will be made available sort of really shortly after this. Um, and similarly, if you have any particular um, very detailed project specific questions, um, you are welcome to put them in the chat. Um, but I'd also advise to make you of the good growth inbox um, so that the, uh, the team can spend a bit more time giving you a more detailed response to your project specific stuff. Um, so uh, moving straight into it, um, one of the first things uh, we want to cover is, is shared prosperity and how that is broken down for, for us in Cornwall and Isles of Scilly. Um, as you can see there, um, overall our overall allocation between now and March 2025, um, which actually isn't 
very far away at all, um, is 132 million. Um, of that, certain elements have been uh, ring fenced for particular activities, the first one being multiply, which is um, adult numeracy, and also um, some programme management as well. That effectively is the resourcing um, to make the team uh, available to you to help you in terms of navigating the programme. And, uh, and then the uh, uh, remaining 124 million um, spread out across uh, various themes within the, the programme. Thanks to Beth. So the um, overall programme is broken down into three main uh, themes or investment priorities, community in place, uh, supporting local business and people and skills. Um, I should note there that people and skills, we're not expecting to come online until year three of the Good Growth programme. Um, that was an ask from government. That's not us delaying anything. Um, I believe that is because there is still some European skills funding um, available. So um, this isn't to come online until that has been exhausted. Um, however, for you folks on the call, the one that you're most interested in is community in place. And the two calls that we'll be um, covering today are um, highlighted there on that slide for you. Thanks, Beth. Um, and uh, sorry, what I should have mentioned on the previous slide is under each theme, it's the various activity headings. Um, and also sort of what I'm suggesting is uh, uh, the activity headings only tell you so much, they're sort of fairly broad. Um, so it's worthwhile having a look at the initiation documents that gives a bit more detail um, under each of those activity headings. So on to the Good Growth Programme and sort of how, how did we get here um, with our with our allocation? Um, so Cornwall and Isles of Scilly um, been allocated the 132 million by government and with Cornwall Council acting as the lead authority, um, uh, an economic prosperity board was established that consists of five Cornwall Council cabinet members and two Isles of Scilly representatives. It's a joint endeavour between uh, uh, Cornwall Council and uh, the islands and the folks on that board are the decision makers. The board is formal and it is governed by the local authorities constitution. Um, they meet quarterly throughout the year and make uh, decisions on implementations and projects post appraisal. So excuse me, uh, following confirmation of our SPF allocation, um, Cornwall Council in conjunction with the Isles of Scilly developed an investment plan um, that is available on the website. Um, I would imagine any of you that are interested in this programme will, will have looked at that, um, but if not, I really recommend um, uh, having a read through of the investment plan. I think that really sort of sets in place what this programme is trying to achieve and the types of activities it, it, it is seeking to fund and what the objectives are for those activities. Um, and uh, one of the first things that we're sort of noting on the investment plan is there's a, there is a real um, aspiration to uh, see the programme and the funding um, used in the most efficient way and to do the most good. Um, and in order to make the most of the grant funding that we've got available, we're very keen to see as much um, uh, private and other funding leveraged in it, leveraged into projects um, as possible. Um, for those of you who have previously dealt with European funding, um, I'm just going to make the bold assumption that um, there is quite a few of you um, that, that have done that previously. Um, you'll be familiar with the term um, um, leveraging in. Um, however, hopefully you'll note the conspicuous absence of um, intervention rates. Um, so uh, we don't have um, any particular set intervention rates um, across the programme. However, um, leveraging in of other funding does impact your value for money for your projects. So although there's no particular minimum thresholds, we would say it's still very important to consider um, the level of other funding that you can um, pull into your project because that certainly helps helps in terms of your value for money. In terms of the routes to market for this programme, so how are we going to get the money out there um, in, into Cornwall and Isles of Scilly um, and into the projects? Um, there's various ways about it. We've got the open invitations uh, to bid. Um, they're open. We open the doors and it's projects coming into us. There is an element of in-house delivery um, that really pertains to some of the activities that are focused around public infrastructure where um, uh, organisations like uh, Cornwall Council 
or um, the Elsa Silly Council are the best placed organisations to do that. Um, we've also found as well in terms of some learning from previous funding programmes um, that um, commissioning is a very useful approach and um, that's something as well that is happening in this programme and the the uh, reasoning behind that is to try and cut down any of the duplication um, that often occurs and also to try and um, uh, broker partnerships, etc., in order for um, good delivery to occur. Um, obviously, what we're talking about today is the open invitations to bid. Um, also, um, you'll note on that slide as well, um, some delegated grant schemes um, really to sort of take that out of the lingo in terms of delegated grants. That's more about small grants. Um, and what we want to do is ensure that there's a proportional process um, for those as well. Um, I won't talk about it too much here because I'm not sure how relevant it is for the folks on the call, but I will mention it briefly. Um, some of you may be aware um, of Growth Hub um, and the People and Skills Hub, which is an endeavour that's um, previously been funded under the European programmes. That is something that we're looking to grow and evolve under the Good Growth programme. And um, that's really focused on uh, business support for Cornwall and Isles of Silly businesses. And within that, there's uh, we're aiming to put quite a lot of um, uh, uh, grant funding to be accessed as small grants as well and to try and keep that um, as, a, as a proportional and uh, an easy process to follow. Thanks, Beth. In terms of the Good Growth Programme and uh, what that means, um, really, we, I think we can only really describe this at programme level as a set of aspirations that we're, we're looking to um, achieve here in Cornwall and Isles of Scilly. And we are very much hoping that in terms of defining good growth, that we can work with you as applicants to um, express what that means. Um, we've got the sort of the, the, the broad aspirations there, um, but really what we would like applicants to do is um, interpret that for your own projects. What is it that you're doing um, and all the good things that you want to do and achieve um, with your projects how does that link back to the good growth principles what does that look like for you um, and it's and it's really quite broad there it does cover all three themes of sustainability the financial the economic and the social and uh, we're trying to avoid being very prescriptive here because we do want to strike that balance between providing guidance um, but not being so prescriptive that we end up killing any cre creativity that is out there in terms of your projects and the approach that you would like to take in terms of delivering these aspirations. So we're really asking projects to consider what's in the investment plan, what the drivers of SPF are and the principles described here, and to consider how that's reflected in your specific project. <clears throat> We're also asking projects as well to really give consideration to the whole life cycle of your project um, because we find that there could be opportunities that get overlooked because it feels more um, like the technical day to day process of getting a project off the ground, such as things like procurement. But actually, there is often opportunities in there to excuse me, there is often opportunities in there to um, uh, contribute towards the good growth principles. Um, I picked on procurement, it's quite easy, low hanging fruit to use. Um, for instance, there, that would be local supply chains, how much of what you're buying, using, employing is happening within within the county. Um, and in terms of that grant funding, uh, sort of being being used within our own economy. So um, certainly look at your project right from start to finish, not just the project itself. And you may find that you've got other opportunities there to uh, pull in the good growth principles. Um, I think a key one that's worth mentioning um, is the real living wage and skills. These are two things um, that we've got uh, a sort of a policy priority on almost uh, for the programme. Um, and although skills as a delivery element, as I mentioned right at the beginning, won't be coming online until year three, we're still encouraging all projects, um, no matter the theme or the activity strand that they're falling under, to consider the contribution that can make to the skills agenda within that and also um, uh, 
really uh, driving applicant organisations um, to um, uh, develop significantly so that they can pay the real living wage um, if they don't pay it already, um, or, or certainly um, start putting together the aspirations to move towards being a real living wage employer. So it's just sort of a couple of particular things to uh, to, to be aware of. Um, and also then there's the much uh, sort of uh, broader good growth principles like the health and well-being, our natural environment. Um, so all of these um, we certainly can, uh, are encouraging applicants to um, consider. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. So moving on to the applicant support. Um, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. The first place that we'd like you to come in um, is via the inquiry form. Uh, you already have. That's why you're here today. Um, that is the first opportunity um, for the team to offer that initial advice and guidance. Um, we do appreciate how uh, difficult it can be for those on the other side of this, trying to interpret um, all the headers, all the different types of funding, all the strands that are available. Um, and we're also in a process of um, we're up and moving, but there's still more to come in the future. So um, we think it's just sort of the best way to go about it is if you have a project, if you have a project idea and you're really not sure where you can fit um, or the best route into the program, um, this is about coming into the good growth team and we can uh, provide that advice in the first instance. Um, something I'm very keen to point out that is advisory only. Um, unfortunately, we have had, um, we seem to be hearing a little bit of where uh, people have perhaps been suggested that they might like to wait um, for a different opportunity that that's uh, coming online have sort of taken that as a no um, that's certainly not the case um, we're at that stage it's simply to provide advice if you remain um, convinced that your um, application is appropriate for, for the for the strand then that's no problem at all you will get an application uh, to, to fill in um, for that particular strand um, <clears throat> We've noted on that slide as well um, the potential need for a business case. Now that would come after application. Um, we're being very proportional with that. That's really only for the larger, more complex or particularly risky projects where the application form doesn't cover as much detail as we would need. Um, there, there may be a request for a business case um, and there will be support available for that as well. That's something that I'm very keen to note that um, myself and my, my folks, we are sort of supporting at the front end. Um, we want to help you get really sort of uh, well-developed quality projects going into the application process. That is then picked up by another side of the team that do the sort of very technical appraisal side and may make that decision on requirement for a business case. However, if that is the case, um, uh, applicants will certainly be informed in plenty of time and support given in order to, to achieve that objective. Beth. Um, and just very quickly in terms of who who can apply um, for good growth, um, very little restriction on that. Um, local authorities, public sector organisations, higher and further education institutions, private sector companies, voluntary organisations and registered charities. So it's pretty much if you're a legal entity, um, then you are eligible. And then really what it comes down to is your project and the fit it has with the good growth programme. Um, <clears throat> now, we've asked you to, as you go, put questions in the chat, um, but we do also have the Good Growth Inbox as well, um, which is regularly monitored. So, as I mentioned earlier, if you have um, particular um, very project specific questions um, or queries, or you just need some advice on something, then uh, please make use of the Good Growth Inbox. Thanks, Beth. So in terms of the support that's available, um, we're, we're trying to be as inclusive and as helpful as possible. Um, we do have um, the team there uh, able to provide that advice and guidance or potentially even signpost you on. Um, we are also building uh, or trying to tool ourselves up with some even better, with some even more resource in terms of the support that we can give to applicants. Um, I should uh, note that uh, we're, we're a fairly new team in post. Um, but we, we've definitely got our skates, got skates on and are moving forward with that. And we are developing um, uh, various uh, sort of resources that we can make available to you. Um, more webinars like this, um, in-person events, 
very specific workshop sessions as well. There's particular themes that we're picking out that we realise that um, applicants could do with a bit of capacity building in. So we're sort of trying to take a view on uh, where we are now and how we can continue to build that support into the future. Um, you'll note there that we uh, there's sort of put a note on there about four hours of free support advice and guidance per applicant. Um, really, that's an attempt to be rational with the resourcing that we've got. So there's certainly an ask there for applicants to um, make uh, best use of that resource um, and consider the timings as well of that. Obviously, we, we absolutely want to uh, get in, help you before your application comes in, but there are deadlines. So um, please plan ahead and um, make sure that we've got uh, that you're sort of well ahead of time if you do think that there's 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 questions or things that you need you need help with so um because we we, we are there but please just be mindful um of those time scales thanks beth so um now we'll move on to the calls um which uh certainly of particular interest um for you folks so the first one there is our cultural events and talent programme. Um, I want to uh, make a, a note there, and I think it follows on quite nicely from the applicant support that we're running this session now because there is an impending uh, uh, deadline coming up for that first review point. There are more review points um, uh, th throughout the next um, year, not calendar year, but sort of uh, between now um, and August. So there's another review point in March and another review point in August. This call remains open throughout that time. Um, <clears throat> so although uh, I think many of you will be um, planning on putting an application in on the 2nd of December, please bear in mind that if you feel that your project is not yet well developed enough, um, do consider coming in for a later uh, deadline or review point to give yourself more time to develop your project and also access the support that's available to you. The main reason for that is that um, if uh, you put your project in isn't quite well developed enough, it's only going to get snagged up at appraisal and have uh, some probably quite lengthy back and forth in terms of clarification. So um, we think it's probably in, in all our interests that we, we get the applications right in the first place. So please just bear that in mind. Um, I think that probably will raise a question of but what happens if it all gets allocated in the first round? Um, first of all, we think that's highly unlikely. Um, however, we do have uh, flexibility within the programme. So if we do find that there there are particular activities that are uh, bringing forward really quality activities that target what we want to see in the or are targeting the objectives in the investment plan. We can look at viring money between activities to continue to support the ones um, that are over oversubscribed. So um, I hope that it can help to allay some fear if you feel like you're not quite ready and would prefer to go for a later one, but are perhaps concerned about the money running out. Um, we, we certainly don't think that's the case and, uh, and and should that be we're, we're, we're going to aim to to respond to that as we as we go through this this program because really the, the key thing is although we have the deadlines and review points we need those to keep things moving the real emphasis is on the quality of the project so we'd rather see the time happening up front with those so the cultural events and talent program um, it's uh, an entirely revenue based uh, program this one um, we're looking for maximum awards up to about a million and the million and the minimum around 100k um, I'd say that if your projects are sort of slightly either side of that then just have a conversation with us um, if they're significantly under the minimum it's probably worthwhile having a conversation with us about um, some of the smaller grant schemes that aren't yet live but may uh, not may will become live um, sort of at this at the uh, beginning to midpoint of next year. Um, so that may be something to to consider for your project. There are two specific intervention areas targeted under this call. Support for local arts, culture, heritage and creative activities and funding for the development and promotion of what promotion of wider campaigns which encourage people to visit and explore the local area. Um, now you'll know obviously I'm just uh, sort of reading reading the jargon that comes with all these programmes. Um, so to uh, an attempt to be uh, useful we'd like to give some examples of things that can be funded and uh, I just want to make the point there that these are examples only. This is not prescriptive in any way. 
Um, so that is things like funding for maker spaces, uh, funding for local art galleries, museums, libraries for exhibitions, support for displays for artists to showcase work, locally led music and theatre performances, tours, author events and film screenings, funding for cultural heritage and creative events, support for outreach, engagement, participation programmes as part of wider local arts, cultural heritage and creative activities support for the establishment development of cultural heritage collaborative networks and campaigns promoting the local area and its culture heritage leisure visitor offer to residents and visitors and campaigns to encourage visitors from further afield to visit and stay in the region collaborating with other places where appropriate so there's a real mixed bag there in terms of what could possibly be funded under this activity strand. And um, I was particularly about emphasising that these are examples only. Um, and this is a theme that you will sort of keep hearing, and particularly when we get on to talk about outputs, is that we um, we want to provide sufficient guidance so that you know what you're doing, but not be so prescriptive that you end up um, either altering your really great project trying to fit something that you think is prescriptive um, or indeed preventing any uh, kind of creative approach to how we deliver the good growth principles and objectives um, because we, we've been too prescriptive in the guidance. So um, there's certainly uh, a bit of uh, a sort of work that we want to do with you as applicants in terms of uh, interpreting um, what these out outputs and outcomes will look like for the programme. And the objective for that call is strengthening our social fabric and fostering a sense of local pride and belonging through investment activities that enhance physical, cultural and social ties and amenities such as community infrastructure and local green space and community led projects. Thanks, Beth. So moving on to the outputs, um, I'll talk about these in a little more detail after the um, once I've spoken about the next call. Um, but I just want to be clear that these are indicative only and this is at programme level that we're looking uh, for, for this number of outputs. Um, but it is indicative and we do have a bit of flexibility for project specific outputs. Um, so uh, I'll just leave you on that cliffhanger and we'll move on to the next call and then I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit more detail about what that looks like. So the second activity strand, the culture and heritage led regeneration skills. Um, this is all about investment in the creative economy, cultural institutions and development of heritage buildings and assets to regenerate our places and communities. This opportunity will drive pride in place and career opportunities, sustainability and social mobility and support the development, preservation and reimagining of our places and buildings and 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 the cultural and creative economy. <clears throat> the uh, key interventions falling under this strand are enhanced support for existing cultural, historic and heritage institutions that make up the local heritage offer. For example, that's the development, restoration or refurbishment of local, natural, cultural and heritage assets and sites. And the second intervention is uh, support for local arts, culture, heritage and creative activities. For example, support for outreach, engagement and the participation programmes as part of that wider local arts, culture, heritage and creative activities. And again, under this, just some examples of what can be funded. The development, restoration and refurbishment of the um, natural cultural heritage assets, delivery of outreach and engagement, funding for maker spaces, again, funding for local art galleries, museums, libraries and exhibitions, support for displays for artists to showcase work, locally led music and theatre performances, tours, author events and film screenings, funding for cultural heritage and creative events, support for outreach and engagement and support for the establishment or development of cultural and heritage collaborative collaborative networks to share knowledge locally. The objective under this strand is building resilient and safe neighbourhoods through investment in quality places that people want to live, work, play and learn in, learn in through targeted improvements to the built environment and innovation. Thanks Beth. So again, here is the um, headline uh, programme outputs for this call. So coming back to outputs, and I sort of just touched on it previously, um, 
these are indicative outputs and I think this is one of the key areas where um, the good growth program is that significant evolution from uh, what Cornwall and Isles of Scilly have pre previously accessed which is the European funding um, so I sort of in a way make no apology at making the comparison because I think this is important um, to note where um, we've uh, there's there's a lot of discussion and desire for the good growth program to be um, much more flexible than we found in under the European schemes and also to try and move remove some of that fragmentation and silos um, that we've previously experienced and indeed the often quite prescriptive nature of the uh, uh, particular outputs um, that are bought by the grant funding. We have um, a, a, a much greater degree of flexibility um, as the accountable body for this programme in terms of how outputs are addressed. So um, the real ask there is to consider your project in terms of the good growth investment plan, the objectives and the activities, and really work on your uh, design and development of those projects to meet what is expressed in that investment plan. And we are very willing to consider projects that are developing their own project specific outputs to express the impact that your project has had. Now, of course, um, uh, I think that sounds like a very exciting opportunity that you have a little bit of free reign there in terms of uh, you have a very creative project and the outputs that you think you're going to deliver for Cornwall and Isles of Scilly are not listed there, um, in which case, um, let us know what they are. Um, as is typical, though, there's always a little bit of a stinging tail when you're given some freedom, is that um, these outputs will need to be measured and evidenced. So there's a there's the key thing there, um, and that will be the responsibility of yourselves as applicants. So just give yourself some time to consider what your project's doing, what the impacts will be, and how you will capture that information, how you will measure it, and how you will express that. Because if you've got it in your application, um, that's going to end up in your grant funding agreement and will be something that we're monitoring you on. So. Um, just bear that in mind as you develop your project and start to express um, all the great impacts it's going to have is can these be measured and evidenced? Um, if they can't, that's fine. Still put them in there, but probably best to describe them as your outcomes and objectives. But but really have a think about um, what you might be able to uh, provide as a measurable um, output. And also as well, really looking at the outputs there, they are quite broad. So um, I would sort of uh, uh, make the argument that if you've got a really good, high quality, well thought out project, some of these outputs are going to naturally fall out of that. Um, what I'd really, really counsel you against is looking at the outputs and then designing a project to meet them. I think that's far too prescriptive and we're going to miss the opportunities to do some um, currently undefined, but really great things for, for Cornwall and Isles of Scilly um, within the um, culture and creative sector. And just before we move on to uh, guidance, um, one thing I also want to mention to all applicants as well, when we're talking about the outputs, outcomes, objectives and the impacts that your project will have, um, project evaluation um, is expected um, for all projects to do. Um, and that, of course, will be entirely linked to, to your outputs and outcomes. So please start considering now for your particular project how you might go about evaluating that as well, whether that be internal or external and also consider the costs of that as well as part of your project budget. Um, so, so certainly include that in your project costs uh, in terms of how you would how you would approach evaluation for that. Um, and as part of our growing offer for applicant support, um, we're very shortly hoping to be able to provide a bit more advice and guidance on, on evaluation. Um, however, I think there's also plenty out there um, in, in terms of other funding programmes that can give you a good steer on what evaluation should look like. Like. Um, and just before we move on to guidance as well, I think that's just another reminder to um, get, get in touch with the good growth team um, uh, ahead of your application going in if you do um, uh, want to ask any more questions about that. And we'll do our best to, to guide you at this time. Um, and certainly as well, bearing in mind um, sort of the looming deadline, sort of the, the, the sooner you do that, uh, the, the better, I think. Uh, particularly while we're sort of on 
your side acting as poacher at the moment um, before your application comes in and then then we sort of st stop touching it and it, it goes off into the technical side. So on that note, um, I'll start talking to you um, about the technical side and uh, what we're uh, looking for there or rather what is expected um, there. So this is um, the much more uh, sort of um, uh, boring side of things. I'm sure that's probably not the right way to, to say it, um, but it, it's something that's uh, important that I, I want to make sure is got across to all applicants, um, particularly where I was just talking about how this looks different to what went before with the European programmes. Um, it's really important nuance. The flexibility that we can enjoy with the Good Growth Programme is based on the types of activities that we're funding, um, who's eligible, where the money can go, what sectors. Um, that is where the flexibility is. It is still the spending of public funds. So um, with that in mind, there are still certain uh, sort of technical things that we that we will be um, expecting of applicants because the spending of public funds is governed by financial regulations and legislation. It is effectively it's immovable. Um, so uh, although we want to cut down as much red tape as possible, we'd much rather that you were spending your time delivering your projects than filling in forms. Um, Unfortunately, there will be an element of that. We do need audit trails and evidence requirements, not just for the financial regulations, but also for reporting to government um, and evidencing the good things that the programme is doing. Um, and that's also very useful for us sort of collectively as we move on through the years, because that provides us an evidence base for um, attracting more funding into Cornwall and Isles of Scilly. So in terms of the technical side, um, the first one to cover is the application form. Uh, you'll receive one of those after you've come in um, from, from triage. There is a sample application form on the website to have a look at. Um, uh, each application form, dependent on the activities, is slightly different because it will be asking slightly different questions uh, dependent on the nature of what we're looking to fund. Um, uh, I, I think the hope is we've tried to make that as, as simple and as easy as possible, um, but we are alert and listening to feedback on that. So um, wherever we can, we will continue to try and make that um, slightly smoother for applicants. Um, but ultimately, there will be particular bits of information that we that we will be asking from everybody. Thanks, Beth. So capital and revenue expenditure, um, it's a question we get asked quite a lot um, in terms of, you know, what is capital, what is revenue, what's the difference? Um, and you'll note across the Good Growth Programme, um, there is both capital and revenue available um, in terms of how, how that's been split up across the programme. So uh, capital expenditure, uh, we've sort of listed them there those lists probably aren't entirely exhaustive, um, but I think start to give you a really good idea of um, if, if you have your uh, project idea um, and uh, that's in development, you can sort of start to identify what we would consider to be capital and what we would consider to be revenue. So um, sort of in very broad terms, your capital is your tangible stuff. It's your bricks and mortars. It's your um, pieces of kit. Um, and uh, that is also um, the purchasing of land or buildings as well. In terms of revenue expenditure, um, that's things like your your salaries, um, the business travel, um, if you're buying in consultancy, any marketing and publicity costs. Um, perhaps if you're doing um, uh, outreach, it could be buying in um, particular services to help deliver your project. So um, that's again just something to uh, to bear in mind in terms of your project costs, how that shakes down across um, capital and revenue. And we'll have some projects that are entirely capital and some that are entirely revenue um, and some that are a mixture of the two. Um, but again, please bear in mind what the call is and what the funding expectation is, um, whether it's capital or revenue. Thanks, Beth. Um, ineligible costs, uh, again, harking back to um, this being public funding uh, governed by financial regs and legislation. There are certain things that we are unable to fund. Um, I don't think that there's anything listed here that would should be surprising to, at least I hope isn't surprising to anybody. Um, but the main one that I will pick on with that list is VAT. Um, now, the uh, rule is if you can reclaim it from HMRC, it should not appear in your 
your project costs. So if you are a VAT registered business, all your project costs should be net of VAT. Um, I do appreciate that there are um, uh, often a bit more um, detail and various sort of tax implications behind that. Um, it doesn't crop up that often, but it does sometimes. Um, so if you do have any concerns uh, about VAT and how that should be handled, um, I would say in the first instance, talk to the good growth team. Um, however, it may be worthwhile probably just talking to your own accountant about that, that would probably be able to give you um, a sort of a, a better steer than us. But general rule of thumb, if you can claim it back, it shouldn't be appearing in your project costs. Thanks, Beth. So grant funding agreements. Um, I touched on this earlier when I talked about the outputs and uh, what will appear in your grant funding agreement. So this is at the point where you've uh, gone through uh, all the hard work of getting an application in. It's been appraised. It's been approved and we are ready to contract and uh, start sending money to you so that you can get your project underway. So um, the grant funding agreement, it's a contract between uh, Cornwall Council, us as accountable body and you as the applicant. Um, there is a template grant funding agreement, uh, I believe, available on the website to have a look at um, and uh, each pro each grant funding agreement that's issued is bespoke to, to that project. Um, and this is where um, the stipulations are being set out in what the expectations are for the project. Um, a lot of that is going to rely on what was in your application. So that is something to bear in mind, particularly when you're putting your targets together of what you think you will achieve. Um, just bear in mind that that will appear in your grant funding agreement. And similarly, the milestones as well for delivery of your project. We will be using those to monitor the project um, and you'll be reporting against those um, to us as well as your project is 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 delivered. So um, I think the temptation is always to um, be very optimistic with your projects, um, but I would uh, perhaps counsel a little bit of caution and go quite conservative um, in terms of your uh, milestones, etc., just to uh, prevent us sort of knocking on your door saying why have things slipped. Um, just uh, j just to sort of something to bear in mind as you're building your um, your project delivery plan. Um, and uh, also as well, um, certainly worthy of a mention is audit. Um, we are subject to audit. The programme is subject to audit and uh, by extension projects are subject to audit as well. Um, that uh, there's there's no set schedule for that or um, a particular uh, sort of not everybody will be audited, um, but that that could occur and uh, that will involve sort of a, a deep dive into um, the records around the project. So just something to bear in mind is that good admin housekeeping for your project as well. Um, I think that probably is just generally good advice for projects anyway, um, but certainly in terms of being funded, I think that's very, very useful and also as well just to highlight to you um, as project applicants um, that, uh, you know, admin around the grant funding on your side um, it will potentially, um, you know, it, it touch on uh, a resource ask for you. So please bear that in mind as well as you build your project and your project costs sort of take take that into into account because um, reporting on on public funding, um, it can be straightforward when uh, you've sort of set up well from the beginning, um, but can also become a bit of a nightmare um, and you're always chasing your tail. So it's just something to be um, something to bear in mind um, that you've, you've you know, perhaps got somebody who's owning um, all of those financial and uh, sort of reporting records for your project. Thanks, Beth. So on to appraisal. Um, as I sort of mentioned previously, this is sort of, uh, uh, isn't dealt with um, uh, sort of our side of the team. Um, however, um, all projects, all project applications that come in do go through appraisal. Um, there's uh, usually uh, sort of uh, three people that, that look at each project. So um, it's not subject to uh, just sort of any one person uh, making a decision about a project. And um, there's particularly gate gateway criteria. Um, and I think that's something as well that it absolutely needs to be uh, uh, referenced is that on your on the application forms, you're asked to attach certain things. Please make sure you've done that. Um, we do have to take quite a hard view um, because of 
of the uh, volume that sort of comes in that needs to be processed, that any incomplete applications will not go to appraisal, that will be bounced back to you. So, so please just make sure that you have got everything attached when you send that in. If we are keeping an eye on the inbox as things come in, if we spot any that are incomplete, um, we'll absolutely do our best to come straight back to you and say, oh, you forgot to attach this. Um, but um, obviously, as the deadline looms, that gets harder and harder to do. So, so, so please just take that away as an applicant responsibility to make sure that your application is at least complete when it when it comes in. In terms of appraisal, it covers uh, four key criteria. Um, the strategic alignment. So um, what that means in real terms is does your project look like a good growth project? Um, is it linking back to the investment plan, the objectives? Is it is it um, expressing how it will have um, impact in Cornwall, Isles of Scilly? Um, as is expressed in the investment plan and the programme criteria. Uh, the alignment to the good growth principles. Again, going back to we've given quite a broad steer on what those principles are. Um, and uh, this will be about you as your project expressing how your particular project meets those good growth principles. Um, deliverability, um, what we're looking for there, I always describe that as can the project start on Monday? Um, do you have um, everything in place that you need to begin? If you if your application makes reference to partnership arrangements, are they concluded? Do you have an MOU already with your partners um, or are these still remaining aspirations? Um, what we're really looking for there, particularly because you will note that the programme itself has quite um, uh, a small uh, spend window, which only takes us to March 25, which sort of does seem a long way off now. Um, that will soon be upon us. Um, so that is something to bear bear in mind uh, that that and that spend deadline sort of is is immovable. So it's really important the projects are ready to go when you get your grant funding agreement that you can begin. And that is something that we will be taking a, a critical eye on in, in appraisal. And then the final one, but very important, is the value for money. Um, again, I touched on this earlier in terms of the leveraging in um, and uh, with sort of taking a proportional view uh, at value for money. Uh, obviously, the expectation or, or the understanding is that there may be some sort of smaller, more community based projects um, that aren't able to access in uh, any other funding. Um, uh, or there could be any manner of reasons uh, for that. That will be taken into consideration when looking looking at the value for, for money and value for money as well. Uh, please bear in mind that isn't just financial. Um, that is also in terms of uh, uh, what the impact is and how well you uh, align with what the strategic objectives are of the programme. Uh, also, uh, the final thing to note as well um, is in terms of the uh, due diligence checks. Um, that's part of uh, Cornwall Council's uh, financial regulation responsibility as accountable body. Uh, we have to check everybody that we are contracting with. Um, so that's just to make sure that um, it isn't, uh, I think the term is an entity in trouble. Um, we just, it, 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 it's that check of uh, the financial suitability and sustainability of the organisation that, that, that's coming in for the funding. Um, and that really is a risk measurement for um, the use of public funds to make sure that we're not um, sending grant out to an organisation that could fall over next week. So um, that's just something to be aware of. Um, we do also note that there will be fairly new organisations that may not have um, a, a that level of financial background. Um, we are aware of that and are prepared for that. Um, so we're working with the uh, uh, finance folks here as to um, how that is managed, but that we certainly don't see that as problematic. Um, and uh, we, we're just aware that there are a, a real variety of applicants coming through. Thanks, Beth. So subsidy control and VAT. Um, I won't talk about VAT again because I mentioned it earlier. Um, however, I will pick up on subsidy control. Uh, again, those of you that uh, will be used to um, the European programmes, we had the wonderful state aid um, that is now no longer applicable here. Uh, however, subsidy control is. Um, it's, it's, it's extremely new legislation uh, and about, again, uh, governing the use of public funds in terms of um, subsidy. Now, 
Uh, we are taking subsidy advice, uh, subsidy control advice um, as, as we go and, uh, and, and looking at applications. Um, but the, uh, the, we'd say the general rule of thumb with subsidy control is projects demonstrating uh, the market failure. And really what that is, is um, this project could not go ahead without this level of public sector investment. So that's just something to bear in mind um, in terms of the, the subsidy control there. And there may be points where we have to come back and ask you for a bit more information. Um, and then that is assessed as to whether or not it's a subsidy. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't be uh, eligible for the funding if it is a subsidy. It just means that us as accountable body, we have to uh, register that in certain places. So um, it's, a, it's a fairly new area that we're all working in. Um, I mean, you're very welcome to, to look through the, the legislation and I know that Bayes has um, some good resources on subsidy control and what that means for uh, uh, funding programmes and for applicants. Um, but otherwise, that's something that will generally be dealt with um, by us and just coming back to you for more information. Thanks. Uh, procurement. So um, again, an important one um, for a, a couple of reasons. Um, uh, obviously, again, spending of public funds, we we have a responsibility to check that that is done appropriately. Um, so you will be asked for things like your procurement policy. Um, I would also go one further as well, is to give consideration to your procurement strategy for your particular project. Um, I did mention it earlier, um, but this is uh, taking into account how you're going to procure, if procurement features in your project, how you're going to procure, um, are there opportunities there for uh, local supply chain to be used um, and, and other opportunities to um, target the good growth principles under, under that one. Um, and I believe that we do have some procurement advice um, on the website as well. So um, just something to bear in mind as well with your procurement policy, please do stick to it. It, um, because um, uh, again, at audit, um, we'll uh, go back to all the things that you've bought and how you've uh, how you've gone about that, and um, that could present an audit problem if you yourself have deviated from your own procurement policy. So um, just to be aware that although we're asking for for these things, um, it, it it's not passive. That is uh, that is sort of evidence that sits behind your your project that we will refer back to. So so do take an opportunity as well to review your own procurement policies, and if you find you think that this may not work for your project, then take that opportunity to 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 update that. I think is the best advice that we can that we can give you there and also have a look at the good growth website for the procurement advice on there. Thanks Beth. Um, claiming the uh, the important bit there um, again that sort of won't be won't be dealt with our, our side of the team um, however once you're up and running and um, the, the the funding is flowing and you're you're busy delivering your projects we're um, sort of on a quarterly basis going to be asking you um, for your returns um, so that will be your uh, your financial information and that will also be the monitoring information as well now with this, I think there's a, probably sufficient information on that slide, Joe, yeah, that I don't uh, necessarily need to run through with you. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's just that uh, a, a reminder um, in terms of sort of delivering the project is one thing, but there is a bit of admin around your project as well. So please, as applicant organisations, be aware of that and, and factor that into your uh, project design. And what we will also do as well, um, you know, I think we're a little way off yet in terms of uh, the first claims, um, but it's something that we've discussed as a team and we'll be doing. We will run some sessions um, with successful applicants ahead of um, the sort of the first reporting and claiming rounds to talk you through that, um, because I think it's in sort of all our interests that we don't all end up tearing our hair out trying to um, move the paperwork through the system. So um, we're certainly going to look to put some um, time in, in everybody's diaries to um, uh, give you a bit more information and guidance on that and sort of really help you up front so that we can we can start getting it right first time. Thank you. So project change requests um, and the monitoring. So 
I'll, uh, I'll ignore the monitoring for a moment because I think I've sort of already covered that. But project change now, um, I think we're all very wise to the fact that um, we can have a, a great solid project. It's deliverable. It's ready to go. And then something happens and uh, it affects the, the course of direction with your with your project. Now, um, the good news is we absolutely have scope to deal with project change. Um, so so I think that hopefully is, is sort of some comfort as you go as you go forward on your projects. Um, and we do have the ability to update uh, grant funding agreements if needed. Now, obviously, there will be a bit of a process before we get there. And, uh, you know, we've, we've sort of called it the project change request there. So there will obviously be some formal paperwork if you're asking for a project change. Um, but I think generally um, the best advice we can give you if you spot a potential change coming with your project, um, just let us know. Talk to us early. And I think that's probably the, the best thing because there'll be some things that um, uh, we, we might consider are quite minor changes and actually don't need to don't need to. Uh, do too much work in terms of agreeing that with you um, or certainly there could be more significant things um, in which case again early warning is useful for both of us um, so that we can help navigate navigate you through that thanks Beth and um, I think this is the final bit, uh, which I think is good because you've probably listened to me long enough and I'm, I'm conscious of time here as well, um, is branding and publicity. Uh, again, I think we're probably a little little way uh, off considering that at the moment, um, but again, something to bear in mind. Um, what kind of branding and publicity and marketing will you do for your project? Um, what will that look like? And just bearing in mind that we do have some expectations if you're funded by good growth, um, that we uh, want to see the programme promoted uh, alongside side um, the good work that, that you're doing as well and there is branding and publicity guidance on the website I believe um, however if there isn't there will be uh, shortly so um, again I, I don't think that should that's anything too um, onerous or uh, unusual but just something to bear in mind um, that that's what we would we would like to see that's great thanks Beth I think we've done um, so everybody thank you um, I haven't actually I, I've sort of seen the the, the 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 chat going so i think we've got quite a few questions in there hopefully um the team and thank you to my colleagues that are on the call as well um that have been fielding uh some of those questions and uh any that we haven't got to we will now work through answering those and um issue uh an faq for you along with these slides and also the recording of this will be made available as well on our youtube channel um and uh, 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 and as I mentioned earlier as well, the good growth inbox is open. So if you're imminently about to put something in or perhaps you're wondering if maybe you should wait for the next um, application deadline or if perhaps you have um, a, a project specific question that's quite detailed, please do make use of that um, and, and drop us a line and uh, we will do our best to uh, assist you with that. So um, there we go, finished a little bit early. Um, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that sort of is an awful lot of information to listen to and to sort of sit for an hour um, listening to me go through it all. But um, I hope that was that was useful. And um, we're certainly um, going to be doing more of these and, uh, and hopefully move ourselves to a point where we can actually be doing them in person, which I think would be a little bit nicer than, than sitting behind screens. Um, but thank you so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to receiving your applications when they're ready. Thanks very much, everybody.